hometown buddy from Pensacola, Derek Gaynor, getting his biggest chance yet at 126 pounds against Kevin Kelly, the Flushing Flash. Kelly, a past champion in the sport, trying to make it back to that pinnacle. You look at the tail of the tape and see that Kelly is five years older, by far the more experienced. Derek Gaynor with only a one-inch reach advantage, though a height advantage of two inches at 5'9 to 5'7 for Kelly. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Kevin Kelly, Derek Gaynor fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight, and he cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, Harold, for the intros for Kevin Kelly and Derek Gaynor, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer. And now, finally, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jacksonville Coliseum here in Jacksonville, Florida, where tonight Square Ring Incorporated, along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser, present professional boxing for your entertainment. All the bouts are sanctioned by the Florida State Athletic Commission Chairman Alvin Goodman, Vice Chairman Eric Riley, Commissioners at ringside, Dr. Jack Gugino, Terry James, and Alita Waldman. Executive Director, Mike Shanti. Our physicians in attendance at ringside are Dr. James Boyd, Dr. Scott Baker, and Dr. Michael Sharp. The timekeeper is Mark Skillbread. This first bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Union. WBU President John Robinson. Supervisor at ringside is WBU Chairman, Mr. Ed Levine. The three judges scoring this contest on a 10-point must system will be Chester Como, Paul Herman, and William Hutt. And when the bell rings, the man in charge over the action, your referee, Frank Santori. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is our first championship bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBU featherweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trimmed with gold and weighing in at 126 pounds. His professional record, 17 victories against three defeats. 10 of his 17 victories are by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from Pensacola, Florida, introducing the North American Boxing Federated Champion and the challenger, Derek Smoke. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing yellow, trimmed with green, weighing in at 124 and three quarter pounds. His professional record, 43 victories, 30 by knockout, against only one defeat with two draws, and he has captured two world championships. Ladies and gentlemen, from Flushing, New York, presenting the WBU featherweight champion of the world, the flashing flash, Kevin Kelly. Kevin, smoke from the belly button, right? All right, right there. Right, gentlemen, we've gone over this in dressing. All right, low blows. Here you go for both of you. Stand up, stand up, smoke. And here down, so low blow. Here down. Anything yeah. above that's fair. All right, fellas. Protect yourselves at all times. And baby at all times. Questions, gentlemen? Questions? Good luck yeah. to both of you. Good luck, guys. Roy Jones has been a real loyal friend to Gaynor, getting him many opportunities for fights on his undercards. We'll see if he's done him a favor by getting him this opportunity against a much more experienced fighter. We'll also see how much Kevin Kelly has left. Kelly was unbeaten before his January 7, 1995 war with Alejandro Gonzalez. It hasn't been easy for him since then. Derek Gaynor wants to remind Kelly of some of the punishment he's taken in the past two years as he starts out more aggressively than is normally his style. Two southpaws in there against each other. Now, as a veteran fighter, the one thing you want your opposition to do 
a younger fighters to come out and try to punch. Get yourself winded, then the veteran takes over. So Gaynor's got to pace himself. Don't do anything out of the ordinary. Kelly's job tonight will be to keep his head moving. You just can't stand in front of this guy and not move your neck from side to side. He's tall, he's got the, uh, the, 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 the reach advantage. And any time, because he's so thin, he can slip a straight right, uh, left hand right on your chin. So Kelly need the head movement to get inside of Gaynor's jab. That's right, and when you're fighting the younger, ex inexperienced fighters, they throw a lot of shots. They don't even know they're gonna do it. And those shots hurt, they open up cuts. You gotta keep your head moving. Kelly saying to us yesterday, all you have to do is look at the two of us to see what the fight is all about. I've got to get inside and go at his body. He wants to keep me out at the end of his long punching range. It may not be the smartest thing to do because this thin guy has been accustomed to the thicker guys because he's tall going to his body. He knows how to fight that kind of defense. Kelly landing a left hand to the body. Gaynor staying upstairs and trying to fend Kevin off with the jab as Kelly increasingly is trying to wade in and get inside on Gaynor. Well, Kelly is also going up against reflexes. Sometimes you throw a shot and this guy just does something. You don't even, he doesn't know what he's going to do. So you got to keep your defense, your hands up at all times. first 41 fights of his professional career in his last five fights a loss a draw and a technical draw and what Kelly want to do in the first few rounds stay active keep your point system up don't try to hit this guy with your hardest punch This is going to be until when and if Kelly tags Gaynor with something meaningful. And you saw the low punch output for Kelly in the first round. Only 27 attempted punches. His trainer, Phil Borgia, is going to want him to throw that many jabs, let alone that many punches. He wants a lot more punch output from Kelly. You'll notice Kelly moves his head once a punch is thrown. You gotta keep that head in motion at all times. Gaynor landing a little counter as Kelly lunged inside. Now Kelly also, because he's fighting a younger opponent with a lot of muscle tension, use a lot of feints to make him get tired. Every time you use a feint, he'll throw a shot. So, and Gator has one. begun throwing punches with more authority in the last year or two, George. Up to that point, he was primarily a slapper. As he tires, is, as this fight goes on, he's liable, liable to open the glove up and start slapping again. Kelly is playing the wrong game. He's looking for one or two shots. That's not going to happen that easy. But he landed a left hand over the top. 
and has gotten Gainer's attention as he now pins him against the ropes and tries to go to the body. Kevin Kelly thinks that his punching power can make the difference against Gainer, and right now he is rocking him. Very strong sequence of body punches. And Gainer with a big comeback. And with no head movement, George, Kelly was a sitting duck for that combination. And most importantly, sometimes you don't want to wake up these sleeping giants er this early in the fight. Make him do this a little later after you use up a little muscle tension. Because smoke has also can make some fire. Hard left hand shot by Derek Smoke Gainer. More leather in round two than was the case in round one on both sides. Now, Kelly, as a veteran, should know don't follow a puncher. One thing no fighter wants to do is follow a puncher around the ring. You let him follow you. Side is beating Kelly to the punch. And that's like being able to start an automobile race faster than every than your opponent. There goes Roy Jones leaving his ringside seat where he's been rooting for his buddy Derek Gaynor to go back to his dressing room. And Roy Jones has a habit of tempting fate by staying at ringside very close to fight time to root for Smoke Gaynor. Now for the first time. Kevin Kelly is starting to use his feints. You got to make this kid use up some of that energy by faking him. And every time you hit these youngsters, they're going to pay you back. So you better be covering up after you touch them. You heard Alton Merkerson between both the first and second and second and third rounds in his discussions with Gaynor saying, you got to throw the right hand before you try to land the left. At least touch him with the right hand jab before you try to bring that power punch. Another good body shot by Kelly. Instructions from his corner. Trying to weaken the taller, thinner gainer. There again, Kelly has his head standing up one spot, not moving it. Not sure Kevin Kelly had total respect for Derek Gaynor before the start of the fight. I think Gaynor has gotten his attention now. Gaynor's real effective with this overhand left. It seems like he can't miss it. And this is referee Frank Santori telling Smoke Gaynor not to hold Kevin Kelly. And Kevin Kelly's trainer, Phil Borgia, made it clear that he would talk to officials about Gaynor's habit of holding. There's that sneaky overhand left again. Whenever Gaynor wants to get his attention, he throws that overhand left. Tripling up on the jab there. Derek Gaynor still, for the most part, beating Kevin Kelly to the punt. This will be called a slip. That's that quick overhand left. It's going to be called a slip. 
Might have what you want, but it hurt. What might have happened there is that in the process of seeing one fighter miss a punch and twist around, he might have missed the punch that landed. We'll get a look at that later. Gainer sees the... And now Gainer goes down. That hurt too. This is gonna be called a knockdown. This is a knockdown. Six. The previous one was ruled a slip. And that, of course, has implications for the scorecard, where Kelly will get extra credit and Gaynor will not. Absolutely, and it looked like a clean knockdown by Gaynor. Let's see if we can take a look and see what happened. There was the knockdown, a clean, hard punch to Gaynor. Gaynor says, yeah, you got me. And we didn't see what preceded that, but I have a feeling that Gaynor had his foot on top of Kevin Kelly's foot, pinning Kelly's shoe when Kelly went down, and that may be why the referee elected the ruler to slip. Let's see how Gaynor reacts to having, been, having taken that big punch. and knowing that if he misses, something heavy can come back at him. Let's see if that'll change the momentum of the fight. The momentum of the fight, which up to that point had belonged mostly to Derek Smoke Gaynor. Kelly Kelly, Kevin Kelly has taken him a few rounds to understand that this Gaynor fights better moving backwards. You gotta let him come forward a bit and counter him for a couple of rounds. At this point, early in the fourth round, Gaynor seems less interested in throwing those big leads. He is so dangerous, he's like a cat. You corner him, you're gonna get scratched up bad. Half of the combination by Gaynor landed. The right hand missed, the left hand found some Kevin Kelly turf. Kelly's right eye swelling just a little bit. You'll recall that badly swollen eyes helped to cost him the Gonzalez fight. Now, for the first time, Kelly is using an overhand left. And he landed it solidly there. It was because he closed in the range a little bit. He's standing too far away from Smoke, and Smoke is getting all of the heart, the lead shot. Close it up and be the inside fighter. And you heard Alton Merkis in between rounds saying to Smoke, don't forget the fight when you get inside. You lost two fights because you wouldn't fight on the inside. You must prove you'll do it here. <laughs> Kelly's level of caution in going in at Gaynor tells you that Gaynor has landed some solid stuff early on. Gain of confidence gets better and better because of the bruise on Kelly's eye. Three punch combination, four punches, five punches, six punches by Gainer, and Kelly goes down, and his right eye is a mess. He took a shot early before that combination landed and was just trying to cover up and get through the round. Bill Borgia yelling at the referee that Kelly's been thumbed in the eye, and now Kelly comes to Frank Santori to make the point himself. Sit down. Sit down. Give me that focus. Give me this mouthpiece. All right, Mr. Look at me. Get 
at that and look at me. Look at me. We train to fight with no eyes or not. Look at me. We are, we are trained to fight with no goddamn eyes. You got that? Gotcha. You got one eye. That means you got to work that right side even more on the slips. You got me? Gotcha. Don't, don't mean a thing, Kev. Remember what our motto is. Don't, it don't mean a thing. Spit don't it out. Nose, Kev. Come Take this. There you saw the, off the right hand, Kelly started to hold his eye, claiming he has been thumbed. You think anything has happened in this fight so far, guys? <laughs> wow, Kevin Kelly's right eye is functionally closed. It's a total mess. And he's fighting like he want to win anyway. And you heard his trainer, Phil Borgia, saying, forget it, you're just going to have to work around it. And down goes Gaynor. And he's hurt. He's wobbled. Six, here, here. Seven, eight, okay. He's got more than two minutes to, to try to survive this fight. Very wobbly legs for Gaynor. Very wobbly legs. Kevin Kelly. Drawing on his desperation, and now he takes leather in return on the blind side. Yeah. Kevin Kelly was at ringside when Arturo Gatti came back from two eyes like this to knock out his opponent. He's trying to do the same thing, and suddenly the life has come back to Gaynor. Kelly remembering to go to the body as they clinch. He's blind on the right side and swinging away hard from the left. Midway through the fifth, Gaynor's been down in the round. Gaynor's starting to pump punches into that closed Kevin Kelly right eye. is heavily pro gainer they'll try to keep his motivation up regardless of what damage kelly's able to do kelly came out throwing punches in bunches george now he's trying to load up one at a time yeah, well he's desperate now his eyes about to close he knows now what he was trying to do earlier he has to do now He's got to land a good shot, and he's got to do it quick, or this kid is going to pick on that eye until that eye closes yeah, completely. But, but, George, the way he's running away, Gaynor, and just trying to take an occasional wide swing, he really isn't in position to take advantage of the bad eye. He's just looking to survive right now. Well, he'll survive, and if he continues to go round after round, that right eye of yeah. Kevin Kelly is just going to get worse and worse because he cannot see him on one side. As Kevin Kelly goes back to his corner, he goes to one of the greatest cut men in the business, Al Gavin. And it's up to Gavin now to keep Kevin in the fight. Pay hey, close attention to me. Look in my eye. Look what you did with one eye. All right? Pay attention to me. Wins this out. You need to pick Kevin, it up when you're on the inside. He's running. He ain't going to win the title running. You understand me? Gotcha. Increase the jab, work your knees, and work your turnovers. He's there when you're on the inside. You got him. You got him. You trust me? Here's the knockdown as the almost one-eyed Kevin Kelly lands a looping left. Has anybody seen Kelly? I've seen Kelly, and he's never disappoint us with any of his fights. Here he comes back, trying to finish it, but Gaynor Hangs on. Kelly's a brave soul. Round six begins. Derek Gaynor's punch out put, which had been up around 60, slipped to 27 in the fifth round as he was running away from Kevin most of the time. Harold Letterman, your card. 
Okay, Jim, the referee, Frank Santori, called time to clean the water in the corner of Derek Gaynor. I got a 3-1-1, Derek Gaynor, Kevin Kelly rapidly catching up after that 10-8 round of the fifth. I tell you the honest and truth, the third round, I would have scored 10 to 10 because I really thought they were both clean knockdowns, and you know I never score even rounds. But that one, absolutely one knockdown neutralized the other. Gainer two points ahead, Kelly catching up. But Harold, how can you score at 10 10 Jim, when Jim, one was ruled a legal knockdown? Jim, it makes, it not makes no difference. I can score around 10 to 8 without a knockdown. I can score around 10 to 8 with a knockdown. I have that option. I so choose to exercise that option. I would have scored a 10 to 10. It was certainly an even round. I thought that Gaines' knockdown was a clean knockdown. Kelly's was a clean knockdown. Nothing against the rules of doing that. Larry? I have the fight even because I've given Kelly a 10-8 round as well as a 10-9 round, three rounds to two for Gaynor, but I have it even on points. Gaynor starting to fire again, smokes the left. You know, Kelly is playing the wrong game. He's waiting and waiting and waiting, and believe me, that's Gaynor's game. You just gotta throw punches, keep punches coming all the time. That's the only way you're gonna keep Gaynor thinking. You stand back a moment, he slings that powerful straight left hand. But I think he's starting to hurt Gaynor to the body with shots and like that. hurt him, he's hurting him good. That's correct. Hard left hand shot by Gaynor, right on the blind eye. And that stops Kelly for the moment. Kelly, when he waits, Gaynor decides, you're not gonna do anything, I'm gonna do something. That's all you want a vet to make a veteran do is wait, wait, and then you tag him. Gainer able to load up the left hand and just pound away on Kevin Kelly's blind side. And I think I agree with you, George. I think Kelly needs a hotter flurry of punches, more and activity. And when you're not throwing punches, you got to move your head constantly, constantly barb weave. Quick right hand by Kelly as he sneaked in. Gainer backing away, backing away, backing away. He'll try to use the jab to stay out of trouble and pinpoint opportunities to target that right eye of Kelly's. Still to come, our videotape replay of Julio Cesar Chavez versus Oscar De La Hoya. You haven't missed it if you tuned in late. Stay with us. Right now, Roy Jones is being upstaged by a preliminary fight as well as the tape of a week old fight. <laughs> I need you to work your hands. If you don't want to get hit, you've got to get inside and work your hands. Do you got Keep me? your head to Spit. me, Kevin. Do you hear what I just said? Kevin, you've got to be on this man's ass, damn it. Got Hold on, Phil. Do you understand me? I understand you. Okay, you can't be outside, because then you're going to get hit with the ones you can't see. Work your way in with the jab and let it go. You don't want to fight when you're on the inside. I got you. And if you have to, you know where that head goes when he's pulling you down, God damn it. If the ref ain't going to do it, we got to do it. I got you. There you see the big left hand that Kelly couldn't see. It's not has anybody seen Kelly, it's can Kelly see. You heard the instructions from the corner. The little guy has to get inside on the taller guy. Round seven begins. George. We saw a little trace of blood under Kelly's right eye. Is that coming from inside the eye or out of the swelling? I think there's a cut underneath that eye, but we can't see it because of the swelling. What Kelly needs to do now is move over to the left side and run this fella back to the other side. He's allowing him to go on the blind side. All you got to do is run around there and chase him in the opposite direction. So you want him to move to his left? Yeah, you want to move him back around on your side where you got the good eye. And all you got to do is run over there and chase him the other way. Kelly gets tagged on the blind eye again. If Gaynor starts leading with that overhand left, he'll do damage to that eye. I don't know why his trainer wouldn't tell him, Kelly, go on the other side. Don't let him move to, to his left in that fashion. Move, make him move to the right.
Gainer swung wildly and gave Kevin Kelly a chance to land two body shots there, and Kevin didn't throw it. Neither man seemingly with a clear picture here in round seven of what he wants to do. Dean's business could pick up greatly if only Kelly, Kevin Kelly goes over and chase him in the opposite direction. He's allowing him to move in a direction that he wants to move. Is this the same thing as failing to cut off the ring? You don't really want to cut it off, just want to move him. If you want to move, allow him to move where he's ineffective. But you got to go around and just like herding cattle. Make the cows go in another direction. Eric Gaynor using his hand speed and foot speed to land combinations against Kevin Kelly. Gaynor has controlled much of the fight with his quickness, his speed, and his willingness to get off first. Like that. Kevin Kelly with a kind of a seeing eye round. Following Gaynor from spot to spot, not doing much damage when he gets there. You just can't follow him around. You gotta get up close and keep your gloves on him in some fashion. Doesn't have to be hard, just keep your gloves on him. It's only a 17-foot square ring. A lot of people thought that would work against Gaynor, but Kelly hasn't been able to turn it to his advantage so far. And as Smoke Gaynor closes in on a possible upset win over Kevin Kelly, Roy Jones basks in the enjoyment of his own personally constructed day. Basketball for the USBL Jackson Bill Barracudas in the afternoon, and now a title defense at 168 pounds tonight. Okay, okay. As long as he's not taking too many no. left hand shots, he's okay. Okay. No, I think he can go. Yeah, can he can see? go. I can't, I can't see out, but I'm fighting. I'm Let's ready. go. Can you see out of the other not taking You can see out of that eye. I can see. Okay. We I gotta see. work, Doc. We gotta work. Hey, look at him. Look at him. Get outside. This is ball time. You know, when, it, when you have a fight on cut on under one eye, that's okay. You're allowed a fight to go. But when he can't, he clearly cannot see. This is too much of a disadvantage. You would stop it? I would stop hey, the fight. Get this up. Get this water. Nothing to be ashamed of. You can't see. You can't fight. And not only can you not see, it's visible to your opponent. When you fought Alex Stewart and both of your eyes swelled, were you still able to see out of I was them? able to see. It's and one thing sure to be able Kevin to see. Can. He said he could not see. Yep. Well, in that last round, Kelly's punch out put dropped to 25. So he's badly hampered by the inability to see out of the right eye, and it's hurting him in a lot of different ways, both defending himself and mounting offense. But now here he comes again as he's able to pin Gaynor against the ropes. And this is when he does his best work. Well, that Gaynor's sharp as a cat. He knows exactly what he's doing. Left cross there by Derek Gaynor. Misses short with that one. Lunges, but doesn't get hurt because Kevin Kelly isn't able to follow up. Kelly concentrating on the body when he goes to the ropes. That could help him. Gives him a chance to come back and go upstairs. Gaynor's hand still fast. One thing about when your eyes are closed, you have this itchy feeling all over your body and you just want to touch and protect yourself a lot more than you want to fight. Kelly stunned, stunned now as Gator pounds him against the ropes. He got hit twice on the blind eye. Now, Gator has been the aggressor. About as aggressive as we've ever seen Derek Gaynor be in the ring. Solid left-hand lead. Can't fault Kelly's guts. He's trying everything he's got. You wonder why Gaynor would even fight this kind of fight when he can really clearly 
stay on the outside and win. Blood trickling from Kevin Kelly's nostrils now. Both sides bleeding. Down goes Gaynor. A left hand, a big, big left hand, and Gaynor may not get up. He will not get up. Why Seven, would he fight a fight like that? Arturo got Kevin it. Kelly visited. has done it. Art Gainer, his confidence soaring, got aggressive in that round it's and the, gave Kelly an opportunity, George. It's the old Billy Conn, Joe Lewis story. You win in a fight, now I'm going for a knockout also, and it happens to him. Billy Kahn. And shades of Arturo Gatti in the garden a couple months ago as Kevin Kelly, blind in the right eye, scores a dramatic bailout knockout of Derek Gaynor. Gaynor is still flat on his back. Kevin Kelly is a quality athlete. He's a real prize fighter. This is what real prize fighters do. They never give up. They keep coming at you. And we saw last weekend that one fighter with a bad eye didn't keep coming at you. You saw Kevin Kelly there trying to lift Gaynor up. He wanted to pay his respect to Derek Gaynor because I think Gaynor gave him a much better battle than Kevin ever expected from the young man. But at the end of the day, the old pro fighting in his 47th fight had the answer. Gaynor feeling strong, looking at an opponent that he felt he had on the, on the ropes and walks right into a big, wild left hand. Dropped his right hand at the same moment that he threw the left. That was the difference. Watch the right hand drop when Gaynor commits to this left hand. Boom. All night he's been landing that shot. Those have been the same shot that's knocked him down one after the other. Each knockdown, same punch. Why would Gaynor risk such an, uh, to go mix it up with a, a, a club fighter like that? Home crowd was chanting. George, home crowd was chanting. Home crowd wanted to give him a, a big ovation for the knockout. He wanted to reward him, so he went after it, and he got caught. Stay out of your hometown. <laughs> Wasn't the crowd chanting for Khan against Joe Lewis? That's right. <laughs> Let's go to Michael Buffer for the particulars of this dramatic comeback KO. Time. How about a round of applause for two featherweights in this ring who for seven and one half rounds gave us one hell of a war. The end comes at two minutes and 16 seconds of round number eight. The winner by knockout victory and still WBU featherweight champion of the world, the flushing flush, Kevin Kelly. It's hard out here tonight. Derek Gaynor. Final punch stat numbers between Kevin Kelly and Derek Gaynor, and you can see that Gaynor had the edge in punches thrown, punches landed, connect percentage. As George Foreman pointed out, he was tactically in control of the fight, but he gave away that control by getting aggressive and trying to do something spectacular. It's the old story. You keep winning a fight, you're doing it easily. Why go in and mix it up with a guy who's knocked you down already once or twice? Stay away, stay away, get those points, and don't go for the big one. Let's go to Larry Merchant with the dramatic winner, Kevin Kelly. All right, Kevin Kelly, congratulations. How close were you to having to stop fighting? I don't know. I got determination when uh, my eyes started closing. I got thumbed in the eye. They thought that I was a, a punch that did it. I got thumbed. I got hit with the thumb in the thumb area, and uh, it started closing my eye. My eye, you know, started swelling up. I fought with one eye. Uh, what caught him was that me and Phil trained on switching. I boxed righty and I boxed lefty. And when I switched, he didn't expect it. And what happened was he came in with that left hand down, and I came over the top with my left hand right down on his jaw, and crash came game. 
After being so successful staying away from you, why do you think he came at you and gave you that opportunity to land a crunching punch? The eye gave him a false sense of, care, uh, of confidence. And what happened was when he seen the eye swollen, he seen that he could actually had my title, he had me beat. Uh, the one thing that you never sleep on is a champion. Today I answer a lot of questions. I want to thank the main person right here, right here. I got choked up. It's my wife. So she believed in me. She said I can do it. I can regain the title. I the champ. I want to thank my team. I want to thank everybody for coming out, watching, right, Kev, supporting, and again for right, giving me a great Ke fight. Kevin, in the corner, you were constantly urged that you had to fight with one eye. Were you anywhere near saying I have to stop this? No, never. I never told Phil that I'm going to stop fighting. I had a closed eye. I had two closed eyes when I fought Alejandro Gonzalez. I'm used to it. I fought like it before. This is what makes champions. I think Gaynor learned a lesson today also. That's what makes champions. He fought a man with a closed eye. I was, I, you know, it was, he's a great fighter. I got to give him credit. He's he was better, very, very better than fighter. you thought. I want to say crunch, fist, crunch fitness in New York City and no fear. Thank you for staying behind me right. and support. Well, let's take a look at that knockdown and you describe what was going on in your mind and what you saw then. Well, right here we were working on switching over. So I seen Gaynor's left hand being down. So what I planned, I mean his right hand being down. So I did, I come over the top, I switch, Boom. bang, left hand. I turn righty. I was punching, more. we call that the crunch because what happens is I turn righty, but I throw it over the top, as you can see right here. I switch righty as I'm throwing it, bing, and I catch Gaynor. Gaynor is a great fighter. I'm going to tell you something. Another year or two, he could be champ of the world. All right, thank you very much, Kevin Kelly, for a great fight. And thank you, Smoke Gaynor, for also a terrific fight. Did you get a false sense of security from his bad eye and fight his fight at the end. You got a lot of ability, baby. Good job, baby. You got a lot of ability. Um, no, first of all, I'd like to thank the Lord for giving me the strength to do what I do. i like to say what's up to everybody at Pensacola. Um, Kevin called me to get shot. I was winning the fight, but I got a little careless. You know, if you get careless, then you can get caught. And if you get caught, you can get knocked out if you don't see the shot. Just Why did you get coming. careless? Because you saw his eye closed and you, and you felt that he couldn't see your punches coming? No, I was just moving and um, I dropped my hand and he switched off and caught me with a shot. That's all. Do you feel you let one get away by not being more disciplined and just boxing and being willing to take that? No, I'm very disciplined. No, Kevin Kelly, two-time world champion, what can I say? He caught me with a good shot, but I'll be back. It's not the end of Derek Smoke Gun. I'll be back. Thank you very much.